Huddle is brought to you by Canadin's Destination Centre Fort Gary, Tavern United Fort Gary, a new world sports pub. Watch your favourite games on two brand new 70-inch monitors on our patio located at 1824 Pembina Highway in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Hi everybody and welcome to The Huddle, community created here on Shaw TV. This week we're live at Tavern United. Uh, Fort Gary Destination Center um, because they're our partners. They uh, help us so much with uh, the Red River Cup and next year with not only the Red River Cup but with Football Canada Cup. So we wanted to come out, enjoy some Monday night football with the folks at Tavern United and uh, a lot of guests have shown up. We've got a full house tonight and we're going to get right at it. So it's the huddle live on location at Tavern United and we'll be right back with our first guest right after this. This is the huddle community created on Shaw TV. Walk you across the street? Uh, sure. Why not? Thanks. You're welcome. I'm with Ross Mackay, who carries a number of hats with football in this province. You're um, um, the representative to the MFA, MFA. For, MMFA for the East Side Eagles. And I'm, yes, I'm and on you're, their board. And, and you're on the board of football Manitoba. Yes, you're, just you're, recently got there. And your son plays football out in the BC League, yeah. so you got football going on everywhere. And I get out to as many games out there as I can. So is there ever a time when there's no football going on for Ross McKay? No, never. There's always football one way or the other, whether it's pro, junior, amateur, someplace. I even go watch the Bisons games because a bunch of the guys that played with my son have come to Manitoba. I go watch them play now too. So, um, Not just a fan, but also a guy who's heavily involved. Um, what do you have coming up with the Eastside Eagles in the next little while? Well, the season's uh, well into it now. we got the Bud Spud and Steak coming up very shortly on uh, September 27th. We do, uh, it's a fundraiser for the club, and it does very well for us, and people seem to enjoy them. We get a good attendance. We do silent auctions at the same time and other, other prize events and, and draws, so uh, we get a good response. It's a good, great fundraiser and helps uh, the club pay its bills and buy more equipment, for, get more kids playing football. I, I was going to ask you about that because a lot of people around, who, and certainly people who watch our show as well, don't know a lot about how football operates in this province. Tell us a little bit about the club level, what it takes, what you need to do, and uh, is it getting more popular or less? Um, we've gone through a bit of a downturn the last little bit, but it is coming back up. Uh, uh, registrations are improving, That's so it's a good sign. Yep, it's a good sign. Uh, every club's a little bit different, but the basis is every club supplies equipment, which is a great thing because parents are always worried about this big cost of where do I get all this equipment, how much is going to cost me? doesn't cost you a penny. All, at our club, all you have to supply is the proper footwear and a practice jersey. We supply pads, shoulder pads, helmets like all the other clubs do. We clean it up in the winter. It all gets thoroughly cleaned washed, put away for the winter, so it's nice and fresh for the next season. You also have a nice place to play football at Eastside. Tell us the, the background of uh, Eastside Eagles Field. We're very fortunate. Uh, Ian and Al were bright enough and smart enough to take advantage of, the op of an opportunity when the Pan Am Games came through here a number of years ago. So we got a field that was good for field hockey to start off with. And as it wore out and got old, we got replaced with a proper football field with all the proper lineage, ha hash marks, and just recently we put in new lights, so the field is twice as bright as it used to be for night games, which is awesome. It's going to be an outstanding place um, to play major events if you can ever get those stands rebuilt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we have different goals and ideas, and we're we got a few in the in the in the pipe here. Maybe more bud spud and stakes. We need a lot more, actually. Uh, it all takes funding. You got to get the all the levels of government to participate. If you if you don't, we don't generate enough revenues to pay for this. We would like to put up a new building that has stands on top of it eventually. But who knows? And uh, first goal is is we'd like to get a, a another building put up with more washrooms because we lack that. With more events coming, we got more people coming through. We need the facilities and a few more dressing rooms. That's our first goal. The longer term goal is to address the the stands. 
probably get them raised up so you get that good down angle sure. and that's one of our thoughts and even if it comes out we're not going to do a building we've even talked about putting in some pilings foundations and setting the stands up putting up walkways etc whatever it takes to make them safe and proper mm -hmm. make proper coats and we've talked about that a little bit too so who knows maybe in the next few years we might take those steps so the future's bright Yes, there's always good things happening there. We've got a good cor uh, crew of people on our board, good ideas always coming up, and, and it's developing, and the club's going to get stronger, better, and a better facility for, for football. Now, I would be remiss before we finished uh, if I didn't ask you about your boy. Logan's playing football out west, and you go to BCFC games, and you're kind of enjoying this football. I'm doing a lot of airtime. <laughs> yeah, I get out there a fair bit. I've been out to three games already this season. I'm going out again in two weeks. He's uh, with the Vancouver Island Raiders. Uh, they've moved him to the other side of the ball he's now playing fullback and he's starting every game right now playing a playing a lot specialty teams he's having a great time uh, they had a good victory the other day the team is getting better they walloped Okanagan 45 17 it was great to see so uh, they started off a little with struggles early in the year there were so many new players and we lost a bunch of guys to, due to aging out that came to play for the Bisons and they were a big core of that team and they were very good football players so it hurts losing guys like that, but you got to develop your system and get the younger guys replacing it, which they're coming together. They were looking good. So uh, it was a big victory beating Okanagan the other day. Football is the life of Ross McKay, a member of the board of directors of Football Manitoba. When we come back, we got lots more. We're at Tavern United. It's our Monday night football party. Come on back. Hey, I'm Eddie Steele, defensive tackle for the Edmonton Eskimos. You're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. With Todd Wilson, the president of the uh, Winnipeg Rifles, and Todd, congratulations on the first win of the year. It's got to be great to get that one under your belt. It is. It feels great for me. It really felt great. I was out in Calgary yesterday, and uh, the relief on the, the coaches, and it's such a new staff. It was great to see the guys finally get that victory. They've been in a couple games. They maybe deserved a better fate, but to finally get one and do it convincingly was great to see. I was going to say, that was the, the most important thing to me, I think, is that Ryan Marsh played more like Ryan Marsh. Um, the receivers got to see the ball a lot. Um, you added up a pile of yards, and the defense was sensational. It's nice to be a dominant team for a change. It, it was, and it was. Uh, I made the same comment to someone else that finally that big play that we saw when Ryan was there a couple years ago with those guys was back. There was three touchdown strikes were over 50 yards in length. And then the defense, uh, boy, two weeks ago, Calgary's running back racked up almost 300 yards. And I was upstairs with, in the box, and at the midway point of the fourth quarter, he only had three runs that made it across the line of scrimmage. So the defensive guys rally around and really took a lot of pride in that. And that was Cam Fox who finished minus 13 yards. Yeah. So that's tremendous defense. Now, let's talk a little bit deeper about the rifles. Um, how's the organization going? How are things standing? And um, hey, take the, take the opportunity to make a pitch for a sponsor of three. Yeah. Well, it's been a season to change, and it's uh, it's been great right from it's a new stadium we play in. The board is completely revamped, I think, for 15 members, and only two or three of them were there two or three years ago. Virtually new coaching staff. But we've made a real concentrated effort to be more visible in the community. The last game we featured money raising money for Cancer Society. The players have been out at different charities, boys and girls clubs, things like that. And I just I really make that it, it helps the players understand what it takes to be a community leader. And I think that makes us more attractive for sponsors. I just got to go find them now. now yeah, we got to go find them. Um, the Rifles are playing an investors group field. Uh, and this is a good team. I mean, I, people have talked about the fact that you've had one winning season in a decade. But the reality is, is that with Ryan Carhut coaching and with this young coaching staff and these new young players and with some old guys who've come back and, and really make us stronger, this is a pretty good football team. It is. And, and really, it's about changing the culture. And, and being a startup club 12 years ago, the first phase was survive and become established. And now it was time to make that change. And when we made the coaching change and, and looked, that was one of the mandates is we had to bring that culture of winning. And it's important. There's guys on the staff that have, and the board, that have great cup rings and CIS championships. And that's starting to show in how they manage the players. Um, this season, uh, give me a little bit of an overview of uh, uh, the Prairie Conference. Uh, will you be a team that uh, is as dominant as you were against Calgary by the end of the year? We're certainly hoping to be. I've, I've never seen a more competitive group in the PFC than I have this year. There's no runaway with the Hilltops dropping a close one to their rival, the Thunder, and it was the Hilltops fundraising weekend. It's a big one for Regina to steal. 
but it's a one point win. The Huskies start out 3 0 out of the gate. I mean, it's never been as competitive as it has been this year. But the rifles are going to be right in the hunt, and I. Our goal is to still, I want to be hosting a playoff game at Investors Group Field. Okay, if I'm going to my first game with the Rifles, who do I watch? Uh, for excitement level, you're going to watch Ryan Marsh, and as he starts to light it up with some of those receivers, it's always good. Uh, Blair Mattis is starting to establish himself a little bit more. Each game, he looks a little bit stronger at running back. The defense, boy, it's such a lunchbox group. They sure seem to be pulling together, and no one guy stands out. Spencer Reich uh, just had an amazing game on the weekend. Uh, and our defensive backs have played much better and as a group and uh, Brady Will and some of those guys playing back there really made a difference. Great recruiting year. It was and they were able to hang on to a lot of guys that were recognized as some of the top high school players and been able to get some of the guys back that were maybe in um, not contributing how they wanted to at a different level and, and help them realize that get some game action and really show everybody what you can do opens up doors for the future. Todd, thanks for this. Thanks a lot. Todd Wilson, the president of the Winnipeg Rifles, will be back. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Hi, I'm Jordan Yance, quarterback of the Manitoba Bisons. You're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Welcome back. We're at uh, Tavern United uh, for our Huddle on the Road. And my guest, speaking of the road, is the co-owner of Winnipeg exclusive tours, Maisie Hicks. And Maisie, you have a lot of great football tours coming up. Let's sell them. Um, what do you got to sell? Where are we going next? Let's start with your tours in October. Well, our first tour in October is to see the Green Bay Packers versus the Vikings. Wow, how good is that? Amazing. Only 50 seats left. That bus, one bus is already sold out. Can't go wrong for the price. 400 bucks per person. It's awesome. Includes your seats, your two nights hotel, your transportation. We get a little bit of shopping in there. And well, of uh, course, with you going, you're going to get some shopping in. Of course, we have to shop just a little bit. And um, some great tailgating, and that is our first amazing trip in October. Um, you also have a big trip to uh, Kansas City coming up. Let's talk about that. Yes, that one is in, uh, we have two actually, one in September, the end of September, and that's the New York Giants versus the um, Chiefs. Uh, that's September the 29th, uh, that one, and then we also have the Broncos versus the Chiefs. And now that, that's a big one. That is that's going to be one. huge with Peyton Manning at quarterback. Yes, very big. That one is in the end of November, the 29th, and we are hoping to sell that one out. That is going to be our... And that's a long trip. That's not a short, short jog to uh, Kansas City. It is, and it's 12 hours there, but we'll get there, and one day... So less, uh, less staying over um, in hotels and all that. So it's a great experience. We get to tailgate with our bus parked right in the parking lot. Now this tailgate party is going to be the biggest tailgate party Winnipeg's ever seen. But it's going to be in Kansas City. Oh, yes. But it's all Winnipeggers in Kansas oh, City. Oh, yeah. You know, we like the, to party. Now the one I want to go to is Minnesota, Detroit, end of December. Get a chance to see Izzy Adonagy. Yes, that is in the end of December. That's the last game of the Metrodome. That is going to be a sellout. We only have 55 tickets for that. So that one, you need to book your seats right away if you want to see that. So that's December 29th, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings. Izzy Adonage comes back, and it's the last game in the Metrodome. Um, for more information, uh, Maisie, tell people how they can get a hold of you. Well, you can definitely check our web website out. It is winnipegexclusivebustours.com, or give me a call. 204-997-8552. Maisie Hicks, Winnipeg Exclusive Tours. Lots of trips to the Metrodome, lots of trips to Kansas City. It's going to be a great fall season of the National Football League. This is The Huddle. It's community created live today from Tavern United at Canada Inn's Fort Gary. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Andrew Harris of the BC Lions. You're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. One of our favorite guests on the huddle, Rick Hankowicz, the commissioner of the Winnipeg High School Football League, because the one thing about Rick, he always has something to say. Always. Um, tell us about the first few weeks of the high school league. Uh, it's gone quite well, and we've seen some pretty impressive performances. We have. Actually, last week was our opening, uh, opening week. I did a tour of all the camps. It was great. Um, the last week opened up with Sisler and Kelvin, and... Um, you know, low scoring game, 7 6 for. Uh, young linebacker played pretty well, didn't he? He did. He did. Nathan yeah. Dixon, that's his name? Yeah, that and actually Kelvin's uh, tailback didn't play too bad. Might have been our player of the week had it not been for Drennan Bush over at Murdoch. Yeah, we don't talk enough, I think, about Drennan Bush. She really might be the best high school player in the province. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it's interesting. Timekeepers have to phone the scores into me, and, and I get the little commentaries from the timekeepers. And when, Brandon, uh, when the Brandon timekeeper phoned me, he said the game was, uh, was close and the score was actually 43-6. 
or 43-7, but he said the game was close. It was Drennan Bush. It was the Drennan Bush show. So that was the difference. Otherwise, it would have been a close football game. Absolutely. It would have been a close football game. So Drennan is just tearing it apart. I mean, this is... Oh, you know who else tore it apart? Victor St. Pierre tore it apart. He did. He did. Uh, That's almost not fair. Eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns, nine carries, 300 and some odd yards. Um, uh, you know what? It, uh, kind of a kind of a, a skewered one because... Uh, because Victor's so good. Victor's so good, and Miles Mack really had one practice. That was a tough thing. It was a tough start for Miles Mack, a great start for Victor. Uh, watched him, and um, it's funny because, you know, I think I saw 10 football games over three days, and I swear I saw the Argo bounce about six times. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about the MS game that was Friday night, um, Dakota and Vincent Massey. Um, I think that's, that's a game that's probably got some legs. It has huge legs. Um, this, was, this was a great success. Um, Kelsey McKay had talked to him yesterday, and um, he didn't tell me how much they raised, but he said that they raised a great, great amount of money for MS Society. Dakota, same thing. Uh, the players, I mean, the uniforms the players got were amazing. Now, that's, that's Stuart Schweigert, the old defensive back, who was an outstanding NFL player, played with the Raiders, played with the Lions for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but he's come to town, and it looks like um, Football Manitoba is going to get involved with Stuart to do some uh, uniforms as well for the uh, Blue and Gold game. Absolutely. Yeah, I, in fact, I was talking to Stuart, and we got talking to the whole thing about the retro jerseys and everything else, and um, we're pretty proud of our uh, senior bowl jerseys. Mm -hmm. And actually, now I've got to dig some up and send them to him. Uh, he asked for a couple just so Well, you I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I love the Puchniak jerseys. Yeah. I thought the Lapine jerseys were a little withdrawn. You know what? The Puchniak jerseys woke you up. They woke you up. They were the old, they were, they were the old 1972 Montreal Alouette jerseys. Yes. You know, they and, were and wonderful. They, they were great. And, and if you go back to the year before with, uh, with Team Kinley, we had those, those, those A&W orange and, uh, and, and, and Team Brian with the black and red. And, uh, you know, so kids are seeing, you know, the jerseys that we wore. Uh, I don't, it was... It, the uh, the Sisler kids when we had the Team Brian ones, we're all going, Coach, that's what you wore when you played. Like this is wow, we want these jerseys back and everything else. And uh, actually, it was pretty interesting because we're getting a little bit of groundswell from Sisler alumni to buy a new set of uh, uniforms for Sisler going back to the '72 jerseys. Yeah, I think everybody likes that old stuff, and they they like that and the the black on black jerseys, um, the jersey that the BC Lions wore a couple weeks ago. Oh, those are awesome. The the matte black that was just that was great. Yeah, it's good stuff. Now, let's get back to the MS game. Um, money was raised. It was a good football game as well. Um, Dakota won 15-5. to five. Dakota won 15-5. Um, I kind of thought maybe that there was a little bit of Hawaiian hangover for, for Vincent Massey. Um, I, I know Kelsey Meaning that they went to Hawaii and then yeah, flew back. Flew back, exactly. And I know that Kelsey kind of said that, yeah, no, not the drinking. <laughs> uh, Kelsey had said, no, that wasn't it. But, uh, you know what, I'm sure those kids were pretty tired and it was a hot, humid night. Uh, but I... And playing in that stadium can take your breath away in itself. Oh, absolutely. It was amazing. I, I, I got there a little bit late. And um, as I'm pulling up, I've got my windows open. You could hear this crowd. And, I mean, there's only maybe six or 700 people there, but it sounded like six or 7,000 people. Because it of was, the echo yeah, in that building. Because of the echo in that building. It was absolutely amazing. Um, the kids put on a great performance. The two teams put on a great performance. For a low-scoring game, there's a lot of big plays, both offensively and defensively. Uh, and I think that uh, the Kelsey's hoping to meet Dakota in the playoffs at some point. So, uh, what you're telling me is high school football is healthier than ever. Absolutely healthier than ever. We've got uh, really 31 varsity teams, uh, and, and, and you know I was at um, I was at Maples West Cape. Okay, that's an A division game, a Curry division game. Great football, great football, and really kind of new rivalry because they're two Seven Oaks schools that never played each other. So it was great, and, and they really went at it hard. Um, you know, uh, the, the KE Porters game, double-A, 15-7 game there. Very hard-hitting game, really good game. Um, I think, you know, one of the surprises was Garden City over Grant Park. Uh, not that I didn't, you know, saying Garden City shouldn't have won. Garden City actually dominated Grant Park, which surprised me. I thought it would be a closer game than it was. Uh, so, no, overall, it was really good. Um, I watched uh, River East and uh, St. Paul's. Uh, River East can compete. They, I think, unfortunately, they fell to the St. Paul's mystique. They got down a little early and weren't quite sure. Uh, this was their first game back in AAA, right, and course. you're you're playing. I, I believe St. Paul's is ranked number eight in the country right now. So well, they playing, looked pretty good against River East. They did, and uh, they'll be a good team. But you know what? River East has got a lot of talent. Once those kids figure out they can play at that level, look out. It's going to be a great season. The Winnipeg High School Football League. I, I, one more question: Is there ever going to be a girls' league? 
We're trying. Uh, we are. We are. We have put it out there. I'm not going to say that we haven't. We have put it out there. We've gotten some interest from about three or four schools right now. We need interest from about seven or eight schools. And if we can get it, because really it's a spring league. They can use the equipment that's there, the existing equipment. It's, it's not an additional cost to the schools in any way, shape, or form. But it allows girls to play football. It allows girls to play football, which is really good. Um, and, and you know what? The other thing we did um, this, this year was we... Um, as we handed out the, ref the uh, timekeeper's balls, normally what happened is the balls from last year just kind of go wherever. This year, what I did was I took the balls out with me, and we went around, and we just hit every elementary school in the inner city, gave them footballs. Kids were just excited and happy. It was great. So, yeah, no, high school football is on a rise. It, it's, it's stronger than ever and going to expand even further. We're live at Tavern United. Rick Hankowicz is the uh, commissioner of the Winnipeg High School Football League, and we'll see you a lot before the I'm season sure ends. We will. Uh, Rick will be back on. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. We'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Don on Amazon, number 93 of the Edmonton Eskimos, and you're watching The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Hi, everybody. We're back on The Huddle, and my guest is Derek Dufault, a linebacker, defensive end. Defensive end. I always get linebackers and defensive end mixed up because you're sort of the, the outside guys are the same stand-up guys. You got the same job. Um, Derek's job is to chase down quarterbacks and hurt them badly. And you look like too nice a young man to, to be a terrible quarterback sacking defensive end, but I understand you had a pretty good game against Massey. Yeah, it was a really good game. I got my first sack, five tackles. It was, it was a good game for all of us. Now, how did you enjoy playing at Investors Group Field? It's a really nice field. It is. For, it's like, I'd say one of the best turf fields in all of Winnipeg, you know. It was a privilege to play well, there. Well, it better be for the amount of money it cost. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a complete privilege to play there for the MS game. It was, it was really fun. And you had a big crowd? Oh, yeah, I think it was about 700 people. Is that one of the biggest you played in front of? By far biggest. Anyway, tell us a bit about yourself, where, when you started playing, and why you started playing football. I uh, started playing at the age of 7, 8, at the St. Fidel Mustangs field. Oh, it's a club. And, yeah, I just started from there. I I played my first game as defensive end, and I've been playing the same since. Now, that's odd, and we talked about this before, but um, a lot of kids play a little linebacker, play a little running back, play a little quarterback, play some receiver, play all over the place, but you have always been a defensive end. Always been D-line, I have. And do you like that? Yeah, it's like I've tried other positions. I've never played a game of them, but by far, defensive end is always the funnest for me. I just, it, it's pretty good. Because you like chasing quarterbacks. Of course. Uh, one question I like to ask kids, why did you start playing, and why do you keep playing? I started playing when I was eight because I was probably one of the biggest people at my school. Obviously, I want to play football, and I I keep playing because I couldn't I couldn't imagine my life without it. Honestly. Now you haven't said the magic words. You like it because you like the hitting, but you do like the hitting. Oh, I love the hitting, of course. <laughs> uh, special teams, all that you know, just hit, hit, hit. That's what I always do. Um, how far do you want to take football? I don't know. As far as I can go, that's that's how far I would like to go. Now, how do you do in school? Uh, usually about 80s height. Your mom's over there, so be truthful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually 80s. You know, I get I get pretty good marks. So, so university football is something that's on your horizon. Yeah, for sure. It's close to home, so that's always a plus. And you'd like to play for the Bisons? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Brian Doby would certainly like to hear that. Yeah. Tell us about your team a little bit. Now, how good are the Dakota Lancers going to do this year? Um, you know, our offense took a big step up from last year. Last year we were. We are okay, but this year we put a lot of practice in, and our offense has really stepped up. Our defense has always been pretty good, in my opinion, but especially this year, we got a real, real good D-line, linebackers, well, everything. In the last couple of years, you've moved up in divisions, right? Yeah, every single year, not including uh, last year, we moved up from A to double A AA to triple A. Have you been there from the start? No, I just got here last season in the triple A season. So you played with the Mustangs before you came here? Yeah. I played into my Bantam year. Tell us about the difference between playing Bantam football and high school football. Like, it's a really, it really was a big step up. My first game I played at the Oak Park preseason game, and just a step from there to Bantam, it was huge. It was bigger players, bigger old linemen, mean, obviously, faster quarterbacks. It was, it was different. It's, it's a tough game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Star with the Dakota Lancers, Derek Dufault, defensive end. We'll get that right before we go. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for coming on. Um, Derek Duco Dufault and the Dakota Lancers um, will be playing all season long in the Winnipeg High School Football League. Get out to a game. See these kids play. They're tremendous. This is the Huddle, community created on Shaw TV, and we're live at Tavern United at Fort Gary. We'll be here all evening. We'll be back right after this. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Huddle. Scott Taylor. Uh, Rick Hankowicz is on the far right. 
And um, Allison Kessler is to my immediate right. And Allison is the executive director of Ronald McDonald House. And there has been talk that you and Rick and me and Ron East and everybody are going to get together and uh, get football involved with Ronald McDonald House. Tell us what's going on at Ronald McDonald House these days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ronald McDonald House is looking after approximately 600 families every year. Um, we look after families who have sick and injured children and um, families staying together when crises like that happen. Um, you know, it's, it's very important that we care for those families and they stay together. So part of keeping care of those families is providing them with nutritious meals. So I love the idea of all of you guys coming together and coming down to the house, uh, seeing what kind of food you can make and, and feeding our families. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I think some of them are good at it, but not me so much, but I can make toast. Uh, Rick Hankowicz, tell us how this started and um, uh, how it's uh, going the way it's going. I actually started because I do some work from my company with Ronald McDonald House and um, just in, in chatting with Allison and uh, just sort of looking at, at, at what goes on in there. A lot of our high school guys are, they, they, they have to do their, their uh, volunteer hours anyways. And what we thought about though was the fact that they need to see the other side of the fence. And in this case, it's, it's to see the kids that are injured, the kids that are sick and what they have to go through and, and just to build their spirits. It's a two-way street because both sides will benefit from and it. And how easy football can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are people who are going through some really tough times and I know it's often difficult for you as the executive director. It's some of it's pretty sad stuff. It can be. Um, you know, our offices are located right inside Ronald McDonald House, so every day we're interacting with the families and we're hearing our stories. Um, just before I came here this evening, I was talking to a dad and uh, his 16-year-old son ha was in a terrible accident. And, um, you know, there really isn't any end in sight right now to how long his son will be in the hospital and what the outcome will be. So, you know, just taking time out of your day every day to spend with the families and, and talk to them and provide them with some extra support is really important. Um, it's definitely not a nine to five job. You know, five o'clock I walk around the house and make sure that I say hello to everyone and everyone seems to have, um, you know, different types of needs. So uh, it's, it's very rewarding and other times it, it can be pretty tough because not every child unfortunately makes it. So, um, so you know, that's always very, the very sad for us as well too. Allison, thank you. Rick Hankowicz, thank you very much. Football and Ronald McDonald House. Um, there's, there's lots to give, and that's the one thing I like about the high school football team. Um, we'll be back uh, right after this. This is The Huddle. It's community created on Shaw TV, and it's live Tavern United night, Monday night football night. We're here at Tavern United, and we'll be back right after this. Oh, great job, great job. I touched the ball before it went out, coach. Come on, Alex, the ref did not call that. I touched it, it's their ball. Dude. Alex. Good call. Sportsmanship. Pass it on. That was a pretty good show. You guys were here for it all. We were. We saw it all. You liked it, didn't you? Excellent. Excellent. These are my two bodyguards. To my right, Jeff Miller. To my left, Kerry Lauder. Uh, you will see these guys at every football game you go to just about. I mean, one of the two or both of them are at uh, just about every football game in the province. Jeff Miller is from 100 Acre Woods Photography. You bet and James Carey Lauder Sports Photography, mm -hmm. to my left, um, two of the best photographers in the province, uh, and they do a wonderful job for the Huddle and the Huddle Magazine, and uh, so happy that you could join us and be my bodyguard for this last segment. Happy to help. Uh, I know you are. <laughs> um, we had a great show. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, thanks to the Tavern United, thanks to Wade Barkman and uh, his entire staff here. It was a great evening, Monday night football at Tavern United. Come on out whenever you get a chance, and we'll be back doing this again over the next few weeks. Um, on behalf of everybody, Jeff and Kerry and uh, Rick Hankowicz and, and Allison Kessler and Todd Wilson and everybody else who was on the show, I'm Scott Taylor. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. See you next week. The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. The Huddle is brought to you by Canadian's Destination Centre Fort Gary. Tavern United Fort Gary, a new world sports hub. Watch your favourite games on two brand new 70-inch monitors on our patio located at 1824 Pembina Highway in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, hi. I can't get enough of this magazine.
Scott Taylor with the axe. <laughs> Jeremy Withings from the Transcona Nationals Midgets. Carl Volney, running back, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Oh, it's what the ref, and I'm with the ref. Dave Donaldson. It will be busy. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV.